Good morning. Does repentance actually happen? Today we're in Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 16 to 19, following on from what happened yesterday morning. Jeremiah's been preaching. Uh, They're ready to kill him, and he's made an appeal. Let's see what their reaction is. So the princes and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve to die, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Then certain of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah of Moresheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and spoke to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plowed like a field, Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the mountain of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. Did Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah ever put him to death? Did he not fear the Lord and seek the Lord's favor? And the Lord relented concerning the doom which he had pronounced against them. But we are doing great evil against ourselves. Yes, repentance happens. We all know that. But one of the things that makes it happen is our respect for our fellow believers. The princes and the people deliberated. They thought about this. They reached a decision. They decided that the priests and the prophets were wrong in in desiring Jeremiah's death. They decided that Jeremiah was actually doing right, that he was actually meeting God's purpose and doing his will. He's a faithful servant of God who doesn't deserve to die. Then some of the elders arose and they defended Jeremiah with the example of Micah. You know, the book of Micah, same guy. He prophesied that Jerusalem would be more or less plowed under, but you know what? They did not kill him, and on that basis they say you should not kill Jeremiah either. Now, we don't have a lot of other Bible information about that incident, but we do have the story of it, and it does seem that it's exactly as it's said here. So the people here decide that Jeremiah shouldn't die. I'm sure the prophets and the priests, some of them were quite antagonized, But instead of saying to your tents, O Israel, and everybody going and breaking up the country, they all sort of consented to let Jeremiah live. His ministry is permitted to continue. No one tries to kill Jeremiah independently. They just are going to allow this for now. And so things carry on. Some were found who believed the prophet, who recognized the need for spiritual correction, and knew that the country needed to change direction. It's important for us to realize that God can amplify the desire of the faithful, those who stand up for truth and goodness. Many times they feel like, you know, it's useless to stand up. We're we're just going to be ourselves be destroyed. But when just a few, even a very small number, stand up for truth, God can do mighty things. Group dynamics change a lot. And so we'll have to see what, what continues to happen here. Even in a nation as far gone as the kingdom of Judah in the time of Jeremiah, God can do mighty things. If there's just a few hearts, even just a few, who will turn to him. You or I might feel that we maybe represent kind of a hopeless minority in the church, that all the trends in the church are pretty much in the wrong direction and anything we might say or do would be useless. Don't think that too fast. Sometimes the faithful can be counted on the fingers on one hand, or so it seems to us. You remember Elijah? He thought he was the only one. He thought there was just one. But God said, you know, I've got thousands who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. So don't feel discouraged. Don't feel alone when you feel that possibly you should stand up for truth, but you're afraid to do it. Be faithful and stand in your place and let God do the rest. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for watching over your people. We thank you for watching over your church. Just today, Lord, just now, we pray that you will uh, move upon hearts, that hearts will be drawn to Jesus, drawn to the scriptures, drawn to the, the prophetic insights you've given us as a people that, Lord, you'll show us how to be faithful and stand up for truth, even though people all around us seem like they're caving into cultural compromise at every hand. Lord, we, we are waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Lord, you be our God. You be our guide and show us what to do next. Give us courage, Lord, in a time of cowardice. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's true. Repentance does happen. And sometimes people go along with things because the divine hand of God is moving and they just get on the plan. When even one person acts in faith, there's hope for spiritual revival. You can be that one person. If you're the only one, you be the faithful one. God be with you today in all that you do.